I'm thinking about um, sin and virtue because of witches black lint. Um, and I was taking some notes and um, it was just, I mean, it's always pretty profound to look this stuff up as someone who uses the seven deadly sins in their witchcraft. Uh, this black lint was pretty, pretty creative, pretty cool, to be honest. Uh, and I've been liking diving into it from this perspective, from the lint perspective. And it's, it's cool because uh, to me, sin, well, not to me not to me, is across the board. Sin is, the definition, I guess, is an act that offends God. And when looking at the seven deadly sins, people from today's society would go, why would this stuff offend God? <laughs> uh, so... Uh, I think back in the, you know, this medieval, t the medieval time, especially when Dante's Inferno and Purgatoria came out, uh, the, the, the sin concept had to have been realized so that the church could control the masses, um, in a way that, in a way that would control and oppress certain peoples, so... I think it was Aristotle that said vice lives in everyone and vice is the act, uh, vice is an act, uh, the act of, uh, the, the tendency to act wrongly. Right. Uh, and so like when you're, when, when, and, and how it lives in everyone, like the, 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 uh, the concept, I guess the overarching concept of vice would live in everyone. <laughs> And if that's the case, that's why we have the Inferno, which are the layers of hell, and then we have Purgatoria. Um, so it's it's kind of cool to think about sin in that as aspect as well, because if you have this stain in your body already that's not going to go anywhere, the scar of vice and sin that lives, like all of them live in you, and if you undergo a vice which just means like you repeat repeatedly do you repeatedly act in the essence of the sin, then it's wrong. And then what you have to do is you have to repent, right? But it's the layers of hell are for the people that aren't, rep aren't repenting and they didn't care to repent. They didn't look for God's help. Right. And then purgatory is for those that did ask for forgiveness and they were like, uh, I'm repenting for my sins and then God forgives them. And then they go to like eternal grace, but they can't go into heaven because they still got that damn stain on their, you know, on their soul, on this eternal soul. So, uh, you know, cause, and it's kind of, it's kind of fucked up to me because, we, if we are all born in sin and we have sin and we're gonna sin, this never made sense to me. It, it really separates us from our spirit. It really, the aspect of sin and doing wrongly. And then if we're not asking for God, if, even if we, even if we do the sin and ask for help, we're not going to heaven. These are for people who don't sin. Heaven is. But then if you think about it in the humanity, in the human part of us, where it's inevitable to sin. So to me, it's, if it's inevitable to sin and we still repent, then all of us are going to go to purgatory any fucking way. <laughs> you know, I'd rather fight it out into the death in the circle. Uh, some of the circles, you're just fighting it out. You're brawling it out with, with, with people in there. <laughs> I'd rather brawl it out than just kind of like float in white light, you know, and not go to heaven. <laughs> I don't know. It's just me. Um, I'd rather live my life for me. And if that involves a sin, so be it. <laughs> but I, it's just the, the con, this medieval concept of having this stain, this sin stain on your body that is there. And then if you act on it through vice, through a repetitive nature and you're, you don't ask God for help, then when you die, of course, you're going to go to these, one of those realms, one of the lower realms. Um, 
And and it's also interesting to look in terms of virtue. This black lint here is making me think a lot about this subversion, this blasphemous aspect of sin, right? Isn't to turn the sins around to look at their virtues because all of them have a corresponding virtue. The, the prospect of um, virtue is is its is the sin's remedy they're not subversions or inversions of themselves so say something has a virtue right like chastity and lust right chastity is the uh is the way in which you you uh fix the sin stain of lust in your body it's not always the opposite of the sin either. But it's it's funny because when you think about virtue, it's the way in which you heal. And it's the way in which you stop repeating the vice, stop enacting the sin, is by living a virtuous, uh, is by turning that around. So if you've got a problem with a certain sin, you turn that around to its virtue and live that and repeat that. And some philosophers have said that through repeating a v the virtue of a sin that you're trying to like not have uh, or not do anymore, not enact anymore, um, then <laughs> it, it will help you. But, uh, but not only that, not only do you have to be chast uh, uh, fulfill chastity, um, but you have to ask God to help you fulfill that chastity. You have to ask for his aid. So this is just really crazy um, and, and thinking about that. And like I said, the beauty of uh, the sub the subversion in this black lint is, again, not to look at the virtues of the sin. It's to look at how the sin itself can liberate me. Literally, literally liberate me from the control that establishment has manifested in me, in my soul, in my body, how somehow the establishment, the man, possibly even whoever in my life I consider more virtuous than me has control over some aspects of my spirit. And by honing into the sin, whichever one you pick or all of them, um, we're, we're honing into the nature of our own spirit, we're, we're touching base with spirit. Now, in Lent fashion, okay, in, in Lent, in Catholic, uh, Catholic Lent, you stop doing something, right? Like you, you pick something to stop doing because you have a problem with it. It goes into sin, okay? It literally goes into sin. It goes into the fact that you're having a whatever, like chocolate, okay? You have a problem with overeating chocolate. You have a problem with with this, right? And you're asking by not partaking in whatever this is, you're asking and you're asking God those days of Lent to help you with this problem. Okay. <laughs> and so that's what it is. So in true Lent fashion, I wanted to pick a sin and I'm still kind of thinking about it. Uh, I wanted to pick a sin I actively need in my life as a subversion as well. A sin that I haven't been utilizing. A sin that will aid, again, aid me in becoming and my, my spirit becoming unoppressed. I want to end the uh, first part of this blog. This is like week one, okay? I know I'm going to do this in a vlog style, uh, probably, to uh, help. Uh, it's always good to help, like, help me with vlogs like this in my head. Um, can we just say... I want to end it with this. Can we just say that Dante, in the very beginning of Dante's Inferno, because uh, I like how Jasmine added that, okay? Like I said, as someone who's literally studied Dante's Inferno and Purgatoria, uh, well, the Divine Comedy, um, and someone who actually uses the Seven Deadly Sins every day in their witchcraft, uh, it's funny because in the very beginning... Okay, he goes to sleep. He's napping, okay? First of all, how many damn books do we need about fucking men who are underwhelmed with life? Okay, this is the Faust. Same thing with Faust, okay? He's underwhelmed and some he needs something in his life to wake him up, okay? Whatever. But anyway, so Dante goes to sleep and he wakes up in, I wrote down, uh, wakes up from his nap 
in a dark wood. How, okay, show of hands, how many think this is the witch's wood? He literally woke up in a dream state in a dark wood where no path is, and he and he's kind of filled with fear. This is the fucking witch's wood. Okay? He woke up in this eldritch eldritch forest, okay? This forest of forest, the witch's wood, and didn't know where to go. <laughs> it's the literally the forest of the other world. This is where he's at. This isn't hell. This isn't hell. He thinks it's hell because of how uh, religious he is. Okay. But it's not hell. It's the other world. His ass is traveling. And this is the vision. This is, these are the, these are the lessons he learned. Same thing we witches do. So I thought that was pretty, uh, I thought that was pretty, um, interesting that Dante literally, Dante and Virgil are just traveling the other world. <laughs> I choose greed. Now greed as a sin is for those that may manipulate others for money or hold money above what is appropriate. Maybe they are miserly. They have lots of money or material things and don't necessarily want to give back. But money isn't evil. We need money. And what by using greed, the sin, I can develop a better relationship to money and then extend that out to have a better relationship with capitalism. How might I be contributing to capitalism? I think in terms of sin and maybe possibly in regards to the clergy at large, I'm sure greed may have been a sin so that the church could righteously justify tithing. You know, this whole give to God because everything else is evil. It's all worthless compared to the rewards of heaven. And I'm a firm believer in finding our paradise now. I don't want to wait for paradise. I don't want there to be a paradise after I die. I want to live it now. It's one of the real reasons I chose greed. And I thought about what greed can teach me about my own deservability, if that's even a word. What do I deserve? What do I feel like I deserve? When I make unfair sacrifices to tell myself that I don't need this, this, or this, I use selfishness as a crutch. I use the term as a threat to myself. Oh, if you get that, you're being selfish. And I, I use it to manipulate myself into saying, you know, if I, even if I have the money in the bank and I think that this, whatever it is, is going to benefit me, I use, oh, you know, if you get that and you spend that money that you have, then such and such is going to happen and that you're going to need that money more. You're, gonna, you're just selfish with this. Stop thinking about yourself. Think about the whole. And like, those are good mindsets, but I can't use those things to manipulate myself. Greed, I think, is better. It is helping me form a relationship with imposter syndrome and reward and altruism. If I'm enough, then I can give back. I can pay it forward. At its core, I think greed is desire. It's prosperity. And it doesn't have to mean frugality. Gede Parma once said in a book that desire is a powerful fuel that we witches use to help direct our focus and intent and our energy. It's all based on desire. And these reasons is why I chose greed. As I'm painting this hand, I'm using gold paint to make it look aged. But then I also want it to look flowing, like it can flow out of the fingers at any moment. I, I'm chanting the words, 
I deserve reward. I deserve this. I'm worthy of this. And it will become an incense holder. It will become a relic of greed. Uh, I'm using the poem for week two. When I wrote it, I realized that I want this to be my incantation. I'm going to use it in the ritual. I chose a baptism for my ritual. And instead of going all the way till Lent usually ends, I decided to perform my ritual on Ostara for to make it more witchy. So the baptism is how I'm purifying in greed. Oh, hallowed greed, how I plead, how I need. Oh, hallowed avarice, how I am ravenous, how I am cavernous. Oh, sacred sin, how I am thin, how I grin. I'm longing within. I am baptized in the holy sacrament of self, fulfilling my spirit, fulfilling my body, fulfilling my mind. I honor the witch that is sinning within.